<sighs> right then, what's next? Oh yeah, I'm doing both for this lot. Hi guys, it's Tony for emodels.co.uk. Welcome to the Tamiya 112 scale Yamaha YZR M109. Which is a bit of a mouthful, so if it's all the same with you, I'm going to call this Yazza from now on. I've been model making now for roughly 25 years, give or take. There's been a few breaks in between and things like that when I've got off and done real life things and come back and stuff like that. I normally build tanks, planes, science fiction and things like that but I did go through a phase a few years back now of building cars and stuff like that. Um, they weren't excessively brilliant, they weren't like my tanks and my planes but yeah, they're nice shiny things. However, a magazine I used to read back then, and this is talking about 10 years ago, I used to talk about these bikes all the time and how great they were and I've always wanted to build a Tamiya bike and now I've got a chance to do so so it's always good to step out of your comfort zone build something different learn a few new techniques and then you can take that back to your preferred genre quick look around the kit uh, I've already had this box open as you can see and at first you think <gasps> oh my good grief hopefully some of you guys are going to be watching this, you know, if you come into the hobby for the first time, there's nothing to be afraid of, it really isn't. I'll talk you through as much of this as I can. So we've got all the fairings and things like that there, off the, the front and the back of the bike. So that's all the nice shiny bits that are going to have all the decals on. Trust me, I'm going <gasps> at the thought of doing decals too. As often as I do them, I've still got that heebie-jeebies. Then we've got the main front cowling. It's glorious. And then we get the windscreen. And what look like a couple of wheels, I think that's off the the rear stand. And then we get all the engine bits. So it's quite a, a simple kit, really, in terms of how many parts you get. It's got all the engine parts here. And a big radiator scoop. And other greeblies and suspension forks and things like that. And then we get the swing arm. There's a lot of bike people hopefully watching this and they're going to be going you know nothing about bikes which is true I know absolutely nothing about these super bikes apart from they go around the track very very fast and I enjoy watching that but I haven't got a clue what the actual parts are so hopefully we can learn something together here I think they're swing arms by the look of it and then some kind of spoiler over the wheelie protecty thing see I know nothing about bikes and then we get a couple of rubber tyres so I'll hopefully teach you how to get rid of that really horrible sea mine that I can see in there straight away. And loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of tiny little screws. Which I know for a fact are going to go flying across my bedroom. Yay. So we'll figure that out at some point. Right, and then we get instructions and decals and masking. As you can see there, masking. Yeah. That's going to be fun. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I'm going to help you step out of the comfort zone if you currently model yourself anyway. Ooh, Yamaha badges. Cool. Uh, yeah, out of your comfort zone if you already model make, make models. Same thing, different way around. Or if you like, say if you're brand new, hopefully I can encourage you to try this yourself. And you know, it's not as scary as you think it is. These decals are absolutely gorgeous. I'd look at these properly uh, earlier on, and they're actually textured. I don't know if you can hear that. Brilliant. That's um, carbon fibre supposed to replicate. Now, having done carbon fibre on cars before, those carbon fibre decals are an absolute nightmare. So I'm hopefully going to be able to teach you how to replicate that in paint. Yeah, it's not as tricky as you think. What are you getting? See, I have plastic bags all the time. They don't cooperate with me. They hate me. There's a conspiracy with plastic bags. And then we get the instructions. 
which is the bog standard Tamiya thing, which I'll talk through properly in a minute, and then you get lots and lots of lovely reference photos, including the carbon fibre detail, which looks absolutely stunning. And then you get close-up details of things like the exhaust manifolds, and I'm hopefully going to be able to teach you how to do dining paint as well, where you get all the discoloration of the exhaust. Lovely, 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 lovely. Look at the detail in that engine. It's gorgeous. I get all giddy about things like this. Don't know why. There we go. Discoloration in the exhaust pipe, so you get all the blues and the purples and things like that. So these photos are going to come in really handy for that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. Lovely stuff. And then you get a load of blurb about the bike itself in this section here and then you get all your different languages and things like that and then you get all your decal call outs now you've got two options for the bike you've got Valentino Rossi and Jorge Lorenzo uh, from the Dutch MotoGP by the look of it from 2009 I think I've not got that far in the instructions yet I really should research this properly shouldn't I let's get rid of all this Bash him in the back of the head, then. I do apologise. Okay, doc. Um, I'm squeaky tripod swing on. Then we get the box standard thing of. Let's drop you down. It talks you through all the the gribbly stuff that you'll be doing with the kit. Uh, in this case here, it's telling you about using the Tamiya sprays, which it won't be, because it's October. I'm not going to be able to get outside. It's raining. It's chucking it down today, typically. I'm from Manchester. It chucks it down all the time. Um, so I'll be doing everything that you see here for the sprays in bog standard Tamiya paints and yeah, straightforward to do. I'll be zapping that through with the airbrush so part doesn't quite apply with the aerosols but it's telling you the, that you should be masking off so you can do the, the white and the blue that we see on the front of the bike there which we'll be using these masks which is something I've never done before. In 25 years worth of building, I've never used pre-cut masks. I've always managed to avoid it. So that'll be interesting. So we'll be learning a lot, getting stuff together as well. Um, that gives you a bit of information about how to apply decals. Uh, yeah, that's a box of decal -y stuff. And then it's giving you the options of... Oh! Squeak. Additional parts that you can buy. Uh, that's photo etch stuff for the radiator grill, and you get new suspension bits as well that are made out of turned aluminium and brass. That I think, I could be wrong, they're already pre painted for you. And you also get a Le Le Valentino Rossi even figure and a dynamic stand that you can make your bike look like it's going around corners and things like that. That'll be in the future. I'm not quite getting out to that one yet. And then you get the box standard instructions themselves. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with Tamiya instructions, they are full of numbers. Absolutely full of numbers. And at first you sit there looking at them going, <gasps> what's going on there? I do it every time. I've been building these kits for 25 years. And at first it still makes me go, oh! What's... Well, basically these things here are paint numbers. The X is, I don't know if you can make it out or not, whether I'm zoomed in too close or not far enough. Close enough? Fair enough? Even. Basically, X is a gloss. XF is flat. F, yeah. F for flat. Uh, i get the words out in a minute. And... If, you know, just having a quick look through them all, you, you're constantly zipping around in your head. What I tend to do is circle these, just to call them out. And you do get a paints list at the beginning, and tools that you'll need. Uh, so all that's straightforward enough. But just take the time to have a look at the instructions properly. Don't go blasting straight into it. Just have a look at the instructions. Make a note of the numbers. It's calling out every single piece that you need to paint straight away. But instead of driving yourself crackers, painting all that up and then trying to glue it and then ruining it with the glue seam all the way around your kit, build as many sub-assemblies as you can. I'll go through that properly in a second or two. And uh, what you do then is you big sub-assembly, you paint that 
your main colour. So in this case it's going to be XF16 by the look of it, which is, I've forgotten off the top of my head, uh, flat aluminium? Yeah, flat aluminium. Stay, stay, good boy. So you do all that in one go and then you come back to do all your detail work afterwards. It just saves so much head headaches even. And then we go through from building an engine into the swing arm and frame, frame, frame itself. I'm going through all the colours and then you build up all your sub assemblies together. But that's jumping ahead of myself. Okay. So, so if I just open up a poly bag. Get rid of that. Stop crinkling. Oof. They're an absolute nightmare for filming with those things. Uh, I've filmed what? Is it four or five? video series now on my personal channel and crinkly bags are the bane of my life they really are at least well then um every two minutes when you try to do something with a crinkly bag it's just like crinkle 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 and you've got to try and edit that out or play something else over the top it's horrible right i'm basically on this instruction book now i'm just going to start in this top corner here and build up the main engine block so we need parts c15 C14. See, I mean, it's just numbers everywhere. You just take the time to familiarise yourself with it. So we need C15, C14, C9. Yep, C9. So we do it the right way around. Yep, there we go. Using our clippers, we're going to come as close to the piece as we can. Snip. Snip. And then that way, we're going to reduce how much work we need to do with the nubs that we've just left behind. And you can see there, we've got a nub there and a nub there. Dead easy to take care of. I'll just put it down to one side a second. Okay. As close as we can. Snip. As close as we can. As close as we can. Go. Cool. There we go. Snip. Yeah. The straight pieces. It's really straightforward. Get nice and parallel with the coarse sanding stick. Just gently go across. And you can hear that that's going a little bit smoother straight away. There we go. Come back to the finer grit. Just finish that off. And basically, what you're doing now is you're taking out the grooves that you just put in. Apologies for the burp in the background. My uh, my dad's just come upstairs for the wee wee. <laughs> so, basically what we're doing now is we're just reducing the amount of grooves that we put in with the core stick. So if you can imagine putting 16 grooves in, we now put in a couple of hundred grooves and then you go thousands into millions. If that makes sense. So we're going right now with the, the finer grit. And then come in with a polisher. That squeak means that it's done. And that is now lovely and smooth. Right across there. It's lovely. The second way you can do that is if you haven't got these polishers, don't worry about it. Just very, very carefully have a shave with the knife. Very carefully because you will cut yourself. Trust me, I've done it many times. And if we come back to the engine block itself, you can see we've got the curve now around this corner. Basically what this sponge does, if you can see, it squishes against it, against the part. So you can very gently go around the curve. If we use a completely flat blade, we've got the danger now of rounding, uh, straightening that off, which is a bit of a nightmare, as you can imagine. And then the same process, we go back through the, the grits. Where's that third one? Here he is. That's really great. And then come back in with the, the polishes.
like so. Okay, so I've got those ready. And what it's asking for now is one of these ridiculously tiny polycaps. Absolutely ridiculously small. So we're going to hold that in. Did I mention tweezers earlier? I don't think I did, did I? Get yourself some of these clamp tweezers. As many pairs as you can. Don't worry if the pink or not. I'm not going to laugh at the colours. Oops. That's ridiculously tiny. It really is. Very gently snip away. And then put these somewhere safe. That is ridiculously small. Now, it's telling me that before I glue all this together on the instructions, it lines up with this massive great big pack here, which goes into that hole. Don't know if you can make that out. My camera keeps focusing on the ear models thing. <laughs> Let's get some better lighting. There we go. That's better. So that ridiculously tiny peg there, polycap even, goes behind that peg, so it goes into this hole, and then at some point something screws into there with even tinier screws. So if we very gently, very carefully, pop that into place, he says, there we go, and push that home with ridiculously tiny needle nose pliers. Like so, give it a gentle persuasion. And now we can test fit to see how that goes. And this is the most important step, test fit everything. Just make sure that everything lines up before you actually glue anything. Because this then goes into... Get that the right way around, I don't know. Here, like so. Just to build everything up. What we can do now is take in the extra thin cement. I'm being very, very careful we don't knock this over. If any of my regular viewers are watching this, you'll know. You'll be able to tell everybody else, yes, I do knock stuff over a lot. I really do. So I'm just going to make sure it's all lined up still. And from this back edge here, we're going to drop some of this ridiculously thin glue. I'm saying ridiculously a lot in this video. Oops, that's too much. Just in the corner there. And the wonderful scientific process of capillary action zips that glue all the way down that back seam line there. So I'll give that a tiny little squish just to make sure. And then we do the same on the opposite side. Drop some down that back edge there. And as you do this you'll actually see the glue Zipping along the seam line. Like so. And again, just give it a squish. And then we can put that off to one side now, like so, and prepare a few other bits and bobs for the main bits. Now it's calling out for ancillary parts already. What I tend to do now is just build the main block up, so you get this front face, the sump, rocker cover, and just get the main bits done, and then you can worry about the ancillary bits. Top on. I'm uh, 
renowned on my personal channel for knocking stuff over. Didn't quite get close enough with the, uh, the clippers that time, so <coughs> just off camera. Then I could give it a quick nibble with the the knife, and then I realised I was out of shot, so you didn't see any of that. I do apologise. I'm well known for that as well. It's my catchphrase. Show the people, Tony. Now, these sanding sticks were sold a long, long time ago on the eModel website. That particular brand isn't available anymore, uh, but there are others on there. Just pop along, have a quick nosy, tell them I sent you. They'll probably buy you. No, they won't. Good guys, really are good guys. I've been shopping with these lads now for... I say lads, there's a couple of girls there as well. I do apologise. Uh, the guys, I've been shopping with them for... Whew, six years, definitely. Possibly longer. And as the saying goes in... Another contributor's video. If they haven't got it, you don't need it. That's how good they are. It's always my first stop. And the famous Tamiya engineering kicks in again. You see the little tabs there at the top. Line up with these little tabs. Cutouts even. On the other side. So hopefully, here we go. Beautiful fit. Absolutely stunning. So, just a couple of lines I need to take care of there. Lines? Nubs. Nubs, lines. So, that's what I was saying about, uh, originally. This particular brand of sanding sticks isn't available, but they do have similar on the website. Uh, I think it's UMP Retail that... UMP? UMP? Master put that? Okay. I'll run the name here somewhere. That's something else I'm well known for as well. Scatterbrain. The right way around, that help. There we go. Alright, this is the delicate bit now. Avoid getting your fingertips into the gluing areas. Otherwise, you will forever see your, your, your fingerprints. Yeah, that's too much. It's easily fixed. I'll show you that on a scrap piece if you do manage to stick a fingerprint in. There we go, there's one main engine block. Let's get this one sorted out. So hopefully, uh, amongst the many things I'll be hoping to teach you, is mistakes do happen. Especially if you're new to the hobby. And uh, that's the best way of learning. Make some mistakes. What I'll hopefully do is be able to teach you how to correct those mistakes. Like I said, I've got a few scrap pieces knocking about, so I'll show you a thumbprint and how to mend that. Uh, when I eventually get round to painting, oh, I'll do a quick nasty tutorial on the airbrush. Won't be exact, but it'll give you a better idea of what to do and what not to do. Again, lining tabs up. And what I've not explained about this glue yet is it's what's known as a hot action weld. So basically when we drop it in, like I say, capillary action helps it zip along all these little seams here. Where it does on a molecular level, mole molecular level, I can't even work out today. It 
reacts with the plastic. Let's give that a squish. There we go. You can see that better now. It reacts with the plastic at the molecular level. And instead of two halves being joined together like that, like you would get with super glue, what it actually does is it helps knit the two pieces of plastic together, like so. And then if you give it a squish, you actually see the plastic coming back out through the seam. So it helps to fill the seam at the same time. And that basic knitting together is the weld, which you don't get with super glue. I say super glue just puts two things together. Whereas this, it's uh, quite a strong joint. Once it's uh, once it's set. And with this extra thin stuff, you don't get much of a playtime. Whereas with the white stuff, when I get round to demonstrating that properly, uh, you do get a little bit longer because it is goopy. there for a few seconds whilst it's doing its thing. I'll go away, I'll cut some ancillary parts away from the frames and then we'll come back and bot them on. Alrighty duck. So I'm just going to be really really careful now with the oil filter. You can see I'm just holding it loosely in place. I'm just going to get some glue and drop that in there. Give it a squish and the capillary action will take the glue all the way around. Like so. There you go, done. It's easy enough. And then we've got this little tiny tiny little weenie piece here. I have no idea what that does on any engine. We need to be quite careful with it because it's got a, an attachment point for a hose at some other point. Further down the build. Give it a little squeeze, and that's done. And just checking the instructions. The instructions are actually hot, oh, just there. So I'm not doing this magically. I'm actually uh, paying attention to what I'm doing. You got to see the mess backstage then. You start these video builds with all good intentions of, you know, I'm going to keep my desk tidy and things like that. And then I've literally just finished one now. And yeah, I've not tidied up, I've just gone straight into this build. Why not? Okay, okay there we go, there's some kind of breather pipe. I have no idea what the anatomy of this engine is at all. So I've got a flashy battery indicator up here, so I'm just going to swap the batteries out really quick. Back in a second. Just off camera. Oh, one sec, get off. Just off camera whilst I was changing the batteries out, I've also prepared these next bits. Just cover my knife again before I nearly nick myself. So, again, simplicity of the engineering of a Tamiya kit. Nine times out of ten, if something doesn't work on a Tamiya kit, you're doing it wrong. That's how well engineered they are. Not like some of the kits I've built in the past where uh, I've had to do all kinds of work to it to make stuff fit. Usually 9 times out of 10 I make it spot on. There are exceptions. I did the, the Tommy C Harry recently. Uh, somebody got it me for my birthday. There was all kinds of fit issues. So it's an old kit. Yeah, it's the 1982 bird that went off to the Falklands. And you know, it's got 30 years old, that moulding. So there were quite a few issues. So I tried doing it with the undercarriage up. And they only give the option for the undercarriage down so you can display it statically. I didn't want that. I wanted a dynamic thing that I could put on a stand where you can actually pause it around. 
So doing the prep work for that was you know, fairly easy. But then I did the uh, did the undercarriage up, and none of the bays lined up, so I had to completely rework it. But then once I'd done all that and sorted all that out, flipped it over, and there's a massive great big panel that goes over the top of the avionics bay, right across the middle of the wings. Nothing lined up. So I had to do a fair amount of work to make that look right. Yeah, it's the main part of the plane that you see. It's right across the top of the wings. It's quite terrible. It wasn't chuffed. There we go. Right, engine block done. That's easy enough. We can pop that off to the side now, ready for priming. There's only one part that I've not put on yet, which is this cover here. Simply because, if we have a look at the rest of the instruction callouts, this piece here is this one. And all these little arrows are decal callouts, decal, decal, tomato, tomato. Um, so we need to sort that out after paint before this can go on. And again, there's a couple of other decals that need to go on here somewhere as well. So once that's primed and painted, then we can go back and do the decaling, but that's towards the end of the build. Like I say, I want to try and keep this in as many sub assemblies as possible. So don't let me forget that part. We'll have to come back to that. Okay, so there we go. One engine block done. Uh, went together really quickly, really simply, and had the any issues with it whatsoever, as you'd expect from a Tamiya kit. Basically, like I said in the early Eclipse, if it doesn't fit, you're doing something wrong with Tamiya kits. Uh, so that'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, please go and check your models out. If they don't have it, you don't need it, as the saying goes. Um, they're amongst the best e-retails out there, full stop, for model making. Uh, I think they're the primary point of call and distributor for quite a few different kits and manufacturers and things like that. I have to look into that. Uh, I'll get back to that in episode two. However, thank you for watching. And join me in part two, and we'll go on to explaining how we did all the subframes and things like that. So, see you soon.